Assalamu alaikum this is our fourth lecture of advanced electromagnetic field and waves and in this lecture uh, we will discuss about uh, maxwell's equations as we already derived maxwell's equations in our previous lecture number 3 if you forgot to watch you can watch that video first how you can derive these four equations of maxwell equations then you have to come to this video okay so this is only for the view our view we just calculated the all four equations maxwell's equations the first equations basically the gauss's law of electric field in which uh, it says divergence of electric field basically equals to the charge density okay rho uh, del dot d basically equals to rho and the second for, uh, equations of maxwell's is the gauss's law of magnetic field similarly the divergence of magnetic field is equals to zero because we see in our previous lecture when we uh, cut a magnet into two pieces then uh, that pieces again becomes magnets okay uh, so we can not generate monopoles okay monopoles doesn't exist uh, the third equations of maxwell's by faraday's law and it says about the curl of electric field basically equals to the uh, change of magnetic field okay this is you know that when you can change the magnetic field you can produce electric field and by changing the electric field uh, or by uh, introducing a current in a conductor it produces magnetic field and that minus sign basically says that the opposition okay opposition in uh, the flow of the charges okay uh, when you provide electric field it produces magnetic field again magnetic field produces electric field so the opposition in that case is that's why minus for opposite in direction okay it opposes in opposite direction that's why uh, this opposition is so known as lenz law now the third equation of faraday uh, the third equations of uh, maxwell's is uh, also the curl of a uh, magnetic field you can say is basically equals to the uh, conduction current which, the, which is jc and plus the uh, change in electric field you can say that uh, uh, displacement current because we see that when you uh, in the case of capacitor uh, when you uh, attach your capacitor with an ac source because the poles uh, change their direction simultaneously that's why there must be some Uh, due to that electric field there must be some uh, magnetic field introduced uh, you can see here this is the capacitor positive plate this is the capacitor negative type plate uh, after some time positive plate becomes downside and negative upside because uh, you connected this capacitor with an ac source if let's suppose uh, uh, so that's why due to change in electric field it produces you can see surrounding there is a magnetic field generated due to the changing in electric field so that's why we can say that some of the current is due to the conduction current because uh, current flow due to uh, flow of charges and some current due to the displacement current which i illustrate here okay so these are the basics uh, as we did in lecture number 3 uh, today is our lecture number 4 we will discuss further more about the maxwell's equations so for that let's take an example a uh, same example i have an, an antenna let's suppose or let's suppose you have a capacitor upside there is positive plate and downside there is negative plate okay so uh, uh because you connect your um, either capacitor or antenna with the ac source so they poles uh, changes fluctuating every in every time so it changes with time so you can illustrate here that the uh, charge change with respect to time okay d uh, partial d by partial t means electric field changes with respect to time simultaneously in every time okay so as i told you that if the electric field it changes it produces magnetic field and we already know that due to the uh, change of magnetic field produces electric field again produces magnetic field again produces electric field again produces magnetic field so you can see here once uh, you uh, change the electric field produces magnetic electric magnetic electric and uh, now there is no uh, charges these are only fields now these are only fields so that's how the antenna works basically uh, if antenna is installed at your homes and you can watch tv sitting inside your room how uh, uh, ever you think how can you see uh, tv 
so this is uh, the basic principle uh, by the fields coming inside your room of uh, that antenna which is installed at the at your roofs okay so uh, antenna generates magnetic field then it converts to electrical magnetic electric magnetic so that's how the fields move in space okay without any medium okay so that's why uh, it moves and these electric uh, these electric and magnetic electric magnetic fields are always perpendicular as i as you show here this circle and this circle is perpendicular again this circle this circle is again perpendicular so magnetic field and electric field are always perpendicular to each other so this is basically the maxwell's consideration now there is another concept of source free maxwell's equations there is only if you uh, change a minor change the minor changes if you, you put charge density which is the rho and if you put current density uh, sorry current density uh, which uh, which is uh, this jd and charge density uh, yes uh, rho if you put this equals to zero you can see uh, the equations now formulated into the source free maxwell's equations in which you can see now as uh, as we put charge density equals to zero so del dot d now becomes equals to zero in the case of source free maxwell's equations okay uh, this is as it is and this is also as it is and in this there is uh, this factor and this factor and you can see uh, sorry uh, this equation uh, curl of electric field curl of, this is similar and this equation this in this uh, jd becomes zero only jc and jc you know is basically the uh, change of the uh, change in electric field okay which is partial d by partial t okay change in electric field because you put only charge uh, current density and charge density becomes equals to zero so you will comes up with these equations okay source free maxwell's equations uh, the main drawback of this is basically electric and magnetic fields are coupled they are not separate they are always coupled to each other okay so this is basically the drawback in this scenario okay so how you can uncouple these both fields electric and magnetic fields okay so if you want to uncouple electric and magnetic fields you have to raise their orders okay what it means basically uh, you know that there are orders in derivation or integration you know uh, first derivative is first order second derivative is second order so if uh, third derivative so uh, three order okay so similarly if you want to uncouple both electric and magnetic field then you have to raise their uh, orders okay as i illustrate here uh, you can see uh, this is the our main equation the curl of electric field basically uh, um, produces by the change in magnetic field now what you have to do you have to take curl on both sides okay means nebula on both sides after taking nebula here and nebula here just multiply and you have to apply uh, a vector identity here okay so now if applying vector identity it becomes del dot del uh, sorry del bracket del dot e and uh, del square e minus so the minus del square e and uh, which is becomes equals to you can see here minus partial b by partial t and because you multiply it by nebula so nebula cross b okay nebula cross b so after this you can see uh, this is our main uh, you just have to stop here now uh, to put the value of del nebula dot e and uh, nebula cross b you have to take another equations from source field equations as i write here a uh, nebula cross means curl of magnetic field basically produces by the change in electric field okay so this is similar as you already know that the d is basically equals to epsilon not e as i told you in our in previous lectures that e and d are both the magnetic fields okay e is simple electric field uh, sorry e and d is both the electric fields okay not magnetic uh, e is simple electric field but d there is a uh, simple a uh, minor ch uh, addition of epsilon not because due to uh, if material is included okay so due to this in this case materials is included so that's why we are taking d so d is basically equals to epsilon not e okay 
Now what you have to do, you have to multiply your this equation by mu naught. Okay, so multiply uh, uh, the curl of magnetic field by mu naught, and you can see multiply by mu naught. And you also know that mu naught h basically equals to b magnetic field okay so mu naught h equals to b which is the magnetic field and uh, now you have to open this d uh, epsilon naught comes out because it's a uh, constant and e here okay so del cross b means curl of magnetic fields now becomes equals to this you have to put this in this okay uh, you have to uh, del dot e you already know what is equals to zero so as it's zero so this whole equation becomes zero only this left minus nebula square e and then minus partial by partial t and this uh, as we already find this we have to put this here now this equation becomes wave equation this is your wave equation after cancelling this minus with this minus okay uh, this mu naught and e are basically constants. Uh, you know the value of mu naught, which is 4 pi into 10 raised to power 7, and also you know the value of epsilon naught, which is 10 raised to power minus 9 divided by 36 pi. After multiplying this, you will get 1.11 into 10 raised to minus 17. This is actually basically equals to 1 by c square. If you put the value of 1 by c square and this, you can see same. So you can replace mu naught epsilon naught by 1 by c square. So it replaces by 1 by c square so you can see delta square e uh, basically equals to 1 by c square and this partial multiplied partial no partial partial square e divided by partial t square now you can see we changed the first order into second order so this is how uh, you can uh, by rising the order of your equation you can uncouple your electric field now this is your wave equation of electric field so uh, by uh, solving this uh, you can easily find the electric field okay now let's move to further uh, now we are finding uh, the solution of uh, our wave equation how you can find the solution of wave equation uh, so for that you have to uh, first of all uh, have to assume your wave uh, let's suppose your wave is sinusoidal okay let's suppose your wave is sinusoidal for the case of sinusoidal you know we take a exponential power minus iota omega t this is the uh, wave function of uh, sinusoidal wave okay basically uh, because uh, your electric field because we are finding the our uh, because we already drive wave equation of electric field now we are finding their solution of wave equation so we have to find the solution of electric field uh, so, uh, wave so electric field basically it's a wave so it's uh, its uh, coordinates are in position and time so its position is uh, ex and and for the case of time we have to introduce their uh, wave sinusoidal wave which is I, I already told you e uh, uh, key power uh, minus iota omega t so this okay because we need in this equation uh, we need double derivative so we have to double derivate uh, uh, an electric field equation uh, then have to put in this equation to final uh, get the solution of wave equation okay uh, so this is our main equation of electric field okay uh, for the sinusoidal case only uh, let's differentiate it with respect to time so you will get uh, this minus iota omega uh, minus iota omega because uh, iota omega comes outside and and this and e, e power minus iota omega t and this this basically equals to again e uh, position and time okay this uh, so now you have to differentiate it again double derivative so it becomes partial square e by partial t square becomes equals to now this square uh, minus iota omega square e okay uh, and uh, uh, when you open square it becomes omega square and minus omega square and okay now you have to put this here you can see our main equation is this del square e basically equals to 1 by c square as you see here 1 by c square now we have to put the value of this we already find uh, we find it uh, as you can see here uh, this minus iota omega square e okay its uh, position and time both uh, components okay uh, now uh, opening uh, this because you know iota square is minus 1 and this minus square is plus so it becomes minus omega square by c square again this is constant and this omega square by c square we name it as a new constant which is k square you can see here k square okay after putting your final equation is del square e plus k 
E equals to 0. This equation is now the Helmholtz equation. Okay. Similarly, this is for the case of electric field. If you can also write this for the case of magnetic field, the only change electric changes into H, which is magnetic field. So del dot H plus K square H equals to 0. Similarly, del square B plus K square B equals to 0. Here we are uh, now the Laplacian operator basically uh, you already know Laplacian is for the case of Cartesian coordinate system it's basically equals to you know uh, in Cartesian there are three uh, coordinates x y and z so that's why uh, your Laplacian del square is basically equals to uh, partial square partial x square per partial square per partial y square per partial square per partial z square uh, let uh, this is complicated if you solve for the 3d uh, let's suppose if our uh, this is my Cartesian Cartesian coordinate uh, 3D. Let's suppose my wave is going in the z, z direction and my electric field is in the x axis. Okay, both are perpendicular to each, each other, but only suppose if my wave is in the z direction and my electric field is in the x axis. So, what you have to do uh, now because my uh, wave is in the uh, z direction, so x direction and y direction becomes equals to 0. First of all, just write your um, Helmholtz equation for the case of electric field in 3d this is this partial square e by partial x square per partial square by e divided by partial y square plus partial square e divided by partial z square plus k square e similar equals to zero and now as i told you your electric field is only going in the z direction uh, electric field is in the x direction and your wave is going into the z direction that's why your x term and y terms becomes uh, nearly approaches to zero and your final equation basically equals to partial square by partial x because your electric the field going into a in the x direction but your wave is in the direct so that's why partial square ex basically z divided by z square partial z square plus k square uh, ex because your electric field in the x direction and the wave is in the z direction so exz equals to zero so this is the uh, partial equation now you can convert into ordinary differential equation so it becomes d square by dz square e okay similarly similar similar equation just your pd converted into uh, uh, ordinary differential equation and you already know the solution for this Helmholtz simple equation is basically equals to this where e naught are basically their constants amplitude constants okay these are so basically your e x z is basically equals to e naught which is the amplitude constant e power plus iota k, k z plus e naught again another constant plus e power minus k z okay so this is your final solution for the uh, solution of your wave equation when we are considering electric field similarly you can find this for the case of magnetic field all these scenarios are same okay so that's all for today and i can also uh, make this lecture on my board so you can take snapshot to in for your record and for your learning process and that's all for today and we, this is our advanced electromagnetic field and waves fourth lecture we will continue furthermore lectures so for that you have to like and subscribe so thanks for watching stay tuned with us Allah face